In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Isaiah chapter 8, verses 11 through 15, where we will see why Christians don't fear conspiracy. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 11 through 15 says, For the Lord spoke thus to me with his strong hand upon me and warned me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall honor as holy. Let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he will become a sanctuary, and a stone of offense, and a rock of stumbling to both houses of Israel, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and many shall stumble on it. They shall fall and be broken. They shall be snared and taken. One of the challenges that Isaiah faces in his ministry are other prophets that are saying things that are different from what he is saying. There are other prophets in the land, but these are false prophets. And these false prophets are saying things like, the Lord is going to protect Judah. He is going to make sure that nothing ever befalls them. When Isaiah is receiving from the Lord the exact opposite message, he is hearing from the Lord that the people of Judah must repent, that they must turn from their wickedness, or else the Lord is going to come in his wrath, and he is going to destroy this nation. It's within this context that Isaiah says that they are not to fear conspiracy, and they are not to call everything that they see a conspiracy, but instead, if they were wise, they wouldn't fear man, but instead fear the Lord. Here are three thoughts from Isaiah chapter 8, verses 11 through 15, on why we don't fear conspiracy. Thought number one, fear the Lord. Our fear as believers is of the Lord and only of the Lord, because we recognize as the people of God that he is our protector, that he is the one who will keep us safe. He is the one who will provide for us and care for us. And because of all that, we have no need to fear our earthly circumstances. This is not a promise that your life is going to be comfortable. In fact, Isaiah's life was uncomfortable. This is not a promise that everything is going to go your way according to the standards of the world. In fact, we know that that most certainly is not the case. But what we do know is that it is the Lord who has ultimate authority over all things. And because he has ultimate authority over all things, he is the one that we need to ultimately fear. Thought number two, he is a sanctuary. The Lord is a sanctuary. The Lord is one to whom you can go for protection, for help. He is the one that we can address and we can draw near to in order to have healing from the things that have harmed us. He is the one to whom we go for comfort and security. The Lord is our sanctuary if we are his people. So as we identify ourselves as the people of God, as we place our faith in Jesus Christ, through whom all the law and the prophets, like Isaiah, are fulfilled, we recognize that the Lord is a sanctuary for us from all that might befall us in the world that ultimately he is going to make all things right and all things new. So we rest in him. Thought number three, he is a stumbling block. So for those that have faith in the Lord, he is a sanctuary. But for those who reject the Lord, for those who heed not his words of warning, then guess what? The Lord becomes a stumbling block. He becomes a rock of offense. He becomes something that is harmful to you. If you are not one of the people of God, then you are one of the enemies of God. This is one of those rare instances where it is a either or, that there are no shades of gray. There are sheep and there are goats. And the Lord will do the parson of the two. If the Lord is a sanctuary for you, 
If he is the place you go in times of trouble and you are one of his children, then it is an absolute blessing to draw near to him. But if you do not believe in him, then he is a rock of offense. He is a tripping hazard for you. And you will find yourself against him again and again if you refuse to acknowledge and fear him as Lord. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Isaiah chapter 7 through 11. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.